Wow, this port is so buzzing! Thousands of people come here every day to work, cargoes come and go, fishers are weighing their catches for the day, and even posh cruise ships pop in here to show this idyllic place to all the people on vacay. The ocean shore is fantastic. People walk along the beach eating ice cream or building sandcastles. Oh, and by the way, right now we're standing where the Sahara Desert used to be. Normally our lifetime is too short to see any major changes. We don't notice mountains rise or the way rivers change their course. Entire valleys may be sinking, but it usually takes too long for them to sink entirely. Still, a group of scientists recently noticed there's a new ocean being formed really fast and we can even witness it appear. Look here! It's the Afar Triangle. There's the Horn of Africa Peninsula not far away. It's the exact site where the sixth ocean is being born at the moment. Wherever you are, you're basically standing or sitting on a tectonic plate. You're just sitting on a couch watching this video? Cool! Your couch is standing on the floor, your floor makes part of your house, your house is standing on the ground, and if you take a deeper look, it all stands on one of 15 principal tectonic plates. Together, these chunks are referred to as lithosphere. It's like a nice apple pie. The crust is the lithosphere, and the fragile apple filling is everything that's on the planet's surface. If the crust cracks, the filling leaks out. And this is what any earthquake is like. A tectonic plate, aka the crust, moves. The filling, also known as houses and people, is disturbed. Africa is made up of two plates, the Nubian and the Somali ones. Yeah, that's a large pie. And it seems like these two plates are constantly separating. It leads to an oceanic spreading ridge. It looks like the African continent is literally unzipping a part of it at this moment. A 345 square mile chunk of the Sahara Desert just split, so the magma rose. It triggered a series of earthquakes across Ethiopia, Eritrea, and Djibouti. And it's not just some minor earthquake. There are lots of fumes rising from those fissures, and it smells like sulfur. Phew! The eruption slowly pushed the old lava sediments away, which is followed by creation of the new seafloor. The crack is filled with magma, and when it cools, it forms the new oceanic floor. If this process doesn't stop, the Red Sea will finally flood the area, forming the sixth ocean, and Africa will be split into two parts. So we'll basically have two Africas. But wait, wait, wait. Neither you nor your grandchildren are going to see that sixth ocean. You'll only have five of them throughout your life. Same with our future generations. Same old Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Arctic, and the Southern Oceans. Before the oceanic floor gets solid, and before the Red Sea actually starts flowing in there, many thousands if not millions of years must pass. The continents move as fast as your nails grow. And imagine that the longest nail ever seen in history was the thumbnail of an Indian man reaching almost 6.5 feet before he cut his nails. It took him almost 60 years to grow it. Now think how far the continents will have to move by the time you celebrate your 100th birthday. Spoiler, it's not going to be very far. But anyway, you can witness some minor changes that take place even now. All those cracks that may not seem that significant so far make all the landscape in the Afar region look really unique. There's a couple more reasons for this uniqueness. Meet Erta Ale in Ethiopia, the volcano famous for its world's longest-lasting lava lake. It's located in the Afar Depression, also known as the Afar Triangle. By the way, depression refers to the sunken area. There's nothing sad about it. It's not the only volcano in this area. Eritrea, known as the Nabro Volcano. It's never erupted, yet the lava in this area is pretty active. More volcanoes are to come because of the tectonic plate movements. They pull away from each other, and the Earth's crust gets thinner. The weaker the area is, the more volcanoes there are. Okay, the plates are separating, and it's kind of inevitable. It's just the question of time. This process is also called the Afar Plume. We'll get more volcanoes, it's inevitable either. But how does it happen? Remember that apple pie? Yes, it was delicious. Well, things are actually much more complicated. The outer layer we walk on is relatively delicate and is made up of multiple broken pieces. It's like the eggshell or a lattice top on a pie. 
Let's take a deeper look at all the ingredients of this pie. Mm. If you cut a slice, you'll see it's made up of many parts, and there's something called the asthenosphere under the lithosphere. It's part of the Earth's mantle. Yeah, complicated. So the asthenosphere gets heated from within, and it rises, just like the dough when you put it in the oven. Remember those cracks on the surface of a freshly baked loaf of bread? Man, I'm getting hungry. Anyway, this is basically what happens to the Afar Triangle, and those cracks make this area split, creating those famous rifts and valleys that will possibly become so large and will probably get flooded so that the world's sixth ocean will appear there soon. Or not. Nobody's sure about it. Okay. But since the tectonic plates and, which is logical, all the continents are always on the move, we'll probably have more continents in the future. The answer is yes and no. If a part of Africa does split, we'll get one more continent, which is going to be even smaller than Australia. But there's one more possible way of how things will go. Chances are, in the next 250 million years. Okay, in the distant 250 million years, there will be no more transatlantic flights. And a walking trip from Japan to Chile will be possible too. Way too long, but possible. It's all happening now, and the first results will be noticeable in some 50 million years from today. I won't be around then. Australia will move towards Southeast Asia, and it's gonna fit in just perfectly. And Africa will be pushed to Southern Europe. Still, these transformations will take a really long time. People and continents have something in common. Remember that continents move as fast as our hair and nails grow. Just about 1.2 inches a month. Some of them move even 5 times faster, though. But even this speed is too slow for 4,500 miles distance between Africa and Europe. One theory tells us the things we've already seen before. Well, you didn't see that with your own eyes. Neither did any of your ancestors who came to America across the Atlantic hundreds of years ago. The fact is, all the continents were once one landmass known as the Pangaea supercontinent. Even though it formed over 300 million years ago and split about 180 million years ago, give or take, it might come back together. So kangaroos can easily migrate from Australia to the UK if they feel like it but the latter might be accidentally crashed while all the continents merge together. The Americas would collide, Antarctica would drift to them, and it all will merge with the already collided Africa-Eurasia. In this scenario, one large ocean and one large continent will appear, namely Novo Pangaea. Another possible scenario claims the continents might merge into the uniform landmass or form a circle with a large sea inside and the Super Pacific Ocean outside. This continent is referred to as Pangaea Ultima. The third theory might be already coming to life. The Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans might just cease to exist, forming the new ocean basin. Eurasia will be split to form a new ocean, and all the continents will migrate to merge into the supercontinent Orica. And the fourth and last theory claims that the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans will remain almost unchanged, and all the continents but Antarctica will merge into one, leaving poor Antarctica even more isolated and abandoned than it is now. <laughs> nah, don't feel bad. Since all the continents keep drifting northwards even now, it's quite probable that almost all of them will meet up somewhere at the North Pole. India could split horizontally into two parts as it runs into Eurasia. The movement of the Indian plate that includes most of modern South Asia is causing the Himalayas to grow. This process started around 60 million years ago when the plate first bumped into Eurasia. Scientists from the Netherlands have used the power of an AI simulator to see what this region will look like one day. The computer model showed that the Indian subcontinent will merge with the Horn of Africa in approximately 200 million years. The present-day cities of Mumbai and Mogadishu will become next-door neighbors. They will sit along the newly formed mountain chain scientists provisionally named the Somalaya. On the other side of this geological formation, Madagascar will connect with Sumatra, while Calcutta and the island of Meridius will occupy the same region. 
Sri Lanka would cease to exist as it becomes part of the Indian mainland. Further to the north, scientists predict that the Himalayas are going to increase in height in the foreseeable future. As the Indian plate continues to mile northward, there will be major changes to the surrounding landscape. The present fault line will drift further south. Tens of thousands of years in the future, there might be no Nepal. The Himalayan range will have expanded sideways to fully engulf the mountainous country. And there may be way more earthquakes in this part of the world because of this movement. Most researchers agree the speed at which India is moving northward into Eurasia is barely a tenth of an inch every year. Some of them think this is happening because of the plate's buoyancy. It prevents the Indian plate from sinking into the mantle, which gives Tibet its elevated topography. Other scholars believe that the structure is buckling under the pressure. The process resembles what happens to a sheet of paper when you push it horizontally against a wall. As you apply more pressure to its edge, the sheet starts to rise in the middle. In the real world, this bulge would be the Tibetan Plateau. A recent theory gives us the third explanation for the process. Their paper still has to undergo peer review, but the findings are intriguing. The international team of researchers introduced a new concept, the delamination of the Indian plate. This term simply means the separation of layers in a material that is supposed to be bonded together. Think of a sandwich that has cheese and ham slices between two buns. Take one of those layers out of the sandwich and you get delamination. In geological terms, this process involves the upper part of the plate peeling off and moving upwards. In the case of the Indian plate, this is the section that supports Tibet's elevation. The lower section is denser, which causes it to sink into the mantle. Plate tectonics are, in this way, similar to a layered cake. Chefs place the spongy, denser layer at the bottom, so the heavier top doesn't crush it. Scientists developed their thesis by analyzing helium gases in water samples from the region's hot springs. Helium-3 is a rare isotope that shows that the mantle is close to the surface of the Earth. Researchers measured helium isotope ratios at 200 Tibetan springs. The pattern they saw shows how close the mantle is to the northern Tibetan surface. Further to the south, they found plenty of helium-4, another isotope, which means that the plate is intact. It forms a barrier that helium-3 cannot penetrate except in one region near Bhutan, in the eastern part of the Himalayas. The seismic activity in the region is good proof that delamination, the sandwich theory, is all real here. And it shows us that the mantle is intruding from the eastern side of the plateau. This concept puts under question the old established ideas about tectonic plate behavior. The scientists behind the study suspect that the unique shape of the Indian plate contributes to the delamination process. It's the thickest at the northernmost point and the thinnest on the sides. If it's all true, it will mean that the continental collisions have a more dynamic and complex nature than geologists previously believed. Scientists still don't have enough hard evidence to prove the correctness of the new theory, just hints. Drilling to depths of over 60 miles is mechanically impossible right now. Such excavations are necessary to be 100% sure that the delamination process is going on. With the right technology, we would be able to better understand the hazards associated with earthquakes in the Asia-Pacific region. It's home to the famous Ring of Fire, where 75% of Earth's volcanoes are located. 9 out of 10 all earthquakes take place here. The India-Australia Capricorn tectonic plate beneath the Indian Ocean is also important for solving Earth's tectonic mysteries. The term geophysicists use for such locations is nascent plate boundary. These are plates where tectonic plates are just starting to pull apart or push against each other. They represent the initial stage of a full-fledged plate boundary. Such a geological transformation unfolds at a pace of barely 5% of a single inch per year. That's about as long as a strand of spaghetti is wide. This shouldn't worry us too much from today's perspective. The India-Australia Capricorn Plate is destined to split in half over the course of tens of millions of years. 
Scientists from France studied records of two earthquakes that happened in 2012 and concluded there must be a nascent boundary there. Earthquakes normally occur at places where two or more tectonic plates meet. But the tremors in the Indian Ocean happened in the middle of the plate. The scientists used sonar scanning to map out the sea floor and see what was really going on there. After further examination of the marine area off the coast of Western Australia, researchers found a complex network of 62 pull-apart basins along a fracture zone. The scientific data backed up the idea that the tectonic plate was slowly but surely breaking apart. It's another proof that the outer layer of our planet is dynamic, not static. In some cases, you don't have to be a scientist to notice these powerful underground forces. Massive crevices emerged almost overnight due to heavy rainfall in a seismically active region in rural Kenya, first in 2018 and then again in 2023. The local population named the biggest of them the Grand Kenya. These events were not one-time incidents, but signals from the East African Rift System, part of the Great Rift Valley. This huge geological phenomenon stretching from Jordan to Mozambique shows us the gradual splitting of the African continent into two subcontinents. You can find rift valleys all around the world as proof of how tectonic plate movements are changing the planet. The East African Rift shows the underlying dynamics of the Nubian and Somali plates. The Nubian plate bears most of Africa, and the smaller Somali plate cradles the Horn of Africa. The two are gradually moving away from one another, which causes the formation of crevices within the rift valley. This process of continental rifting, going on at a rate slightly faster than the one in India, will eventually lead to the split of Africa into two continents. The whole process, which is about to happen in the next 10 to 50 million years, marks a significant geological event that reminds us of Earth's historical transformations. The last time our planet's geography changed so drastically was during the Jurassic period. The world map from the period looks recognizable, but the land masses were oddly positioned from the modern perspective. In the north, Eurasia was still loosely connected to North America, which was at the time called Laurasia. This landmass was slowly moving away from the supercontinent of Gondwana, further down south. It consisted of what we know today as Africa, South America, Australia, and Antarctica. At the time, the Indian plate was closer to Madagascar than to Eurasia, as it is today. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.